to agree, call to order the open meeting of the hospital district. Um, Ms. Kinneman. Thank you. So moving back to item 7.1, which is the draft Fraser Valley Regional Hospital District Board meeting minutes of September 28th, 2023. Uh, moved by Director Mercer, seconded by Director Gill. Any errors or omissions? Those in favor, contrary, carried. 8.1 is the 2023 Hospital District Treasury update for the third quarter. This is an information item, but we're happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Seeing none. Um, next item. Item nine is reports from board directors. Seeing none. Okay, and now we'll move to public question period for items relevant to the agenda. I don't see any members of the public joining us in our boardroom this evening, but we'll just turn things over to our corporate officer, Jamie Van Ness. Ms. Van Ness. Thank you. Uh, we don't have anybody joining us online tonight. We have not received any written questions, so we can move to the next item. Thank you. So looking for a motion to adjourn, Madam Chair. So moved, Madam Chair. Director Fascio, Director Sidhu, uh, those in favor, contrary, carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. To, before I call the meeting to order, I would uh, also like to acknowledge that the land in which we gather is the home of the 30 First Nation communities we call the Fraser Valley Regional District. And the important decisions that we make here at this table can affect First Nation communities in a great many ways. And we endeavor all of our decisions and conversations, keep that in mind and carry forward in the spirit of, of truth and reconciliation. Uh, with that in uh, mind, I'd like to call the meeting to order. First item, Ms. Kinneman. Looking for approval of the agenda and agenda and late items. So moved, Mr. Chairman. It's moved by Director Fascio, second by Director Sidhu. All in favor, opposed if any, the item carries. Next item. Item 4.1 is our delegation on a land backstory, the LMS Society with the City of Mission. We have here this evening, Daryl McKamey from Lacombe First Nation and Bartley Kethley, Deputy Corp City Deputy Chief Administrative Officer for the City of Mission. Welcome. Thank you for being here. And before you begin, I understand that uh, uh, it is our normal practice to have our delegations be uh, 10 minutes, but because we're all friends, we've extended uh, as much time as you need for this important story. So really appreciate you being here and looking forward to hearing the story. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Daryl McKamey. I'm a council member from Lake Hamel First Nation. I'm on my 22nd year with the, the community in my council, council capacity. So uh, thanks for having us. And uh, I'm happy to be here to share with uh, our neighbors um, and my brother, Corey, here. So <laughs> I'll just jump right into it. Uh, we're going to wing it. I'm blaming Barkley for any hiccups that I have with my presentation here. So. Um, yeah, so first of all, thanks for hosting us this evening and providing us the venue to share our journey. Uh, we're honored to share with you our story and hope to inspire all the folks around this table to start working with their neighboring communities. I wanted to start by acknowledging the hard work of so many leaders and members of the Lake Hamel, Mathequay, and Samath, uh communities and uh, over the decades paving our way here today with perseverance, strength, and determination. And we wish to raise our hands to those of the City of Mission and the province of British Columbia who have contributed to the story that we're here to share with you this evening. Yeah, so thanks for hosting us tonight. Um, so this really isn't a story for me to tell. It's really a story about uh, partnership and mostly about the LMS Society. So you're not going to see my face up here too often, um, which is really probably a, a relief for, for most of you, especially Jay. Um, but this is a story of a common goal that morphed into um, what has really become a meaningful relationship between the LMS Society and the City of Mission. Um, however, that being said, it, it really didn't start that way. and it, It's taken a long time to get us to this point in time. But it really started about um, 10, 15 years ago, maybe longer, 2011. 20? 2011, 12 years 12 ago. Years ago. So it was out of ambition and greed of the city to acquire the lands for their own purposes that really triggered this this story. Yeah, so basically what happened is uh, 
Um, well, I mean, obviously this whole story starts with colonization, right? But uh, what happened was the city of Mission had made a proposal for a sponsored crown grant to take back 60 hectares of uh, crown land and uh, turn it into park space. And uh, I was contacted by Councillor Brenda Morgan from Mathequi in 2011, and she posed the question, like, why are we allowing crown land in our backyard to be turned over to the city? Um, this was our land. Originally, it was uh, it was a reserve set aside for Mathequi, or a portion of it was set aside for Mathequi, and uh, Chief Joe Mathequi had turned the land over um, on knowingly uh, for residential school it was turned to the residential school so uh, you know the the pre-existing relationship between the camel and and samath and math we we were able to get together in a room and start having the discussion uh, we engaged the city and at the time the city was they, it wasn't adversarial really at all it was more like uh you know, they were prepared to step aside and let us engage the province. So we moved forward and just started discussions with the province and uh, the brakes were pumped at that point. Uh, there was no existing path for First Nations to obtain a sponsor crown grant at that time. So we had to find a way to, or a loophole to work through so we could uh, get a sponsor crown grant in order for the land to be transferred to us. So over a period of time of working with the province on and off with the previous Liberal government, um, we found a loophole that uh, societies were able to acquire sponsor crown grants. So we established the LMS Society um, and we, we began negotiations at that point. And at this point, like, I just want to honor like LMS uh, honors all those in the nations who have been involved and supported us to represent communities consistently over the years in this endeavor, our, our memberships have been very consistent in re-electing us and allowing us to continue this work. Um, it was a challenge for us as well. And it's something that I often tell my peers, like at some point we have to let our guard down too, right? Because uh, there's always fear, right? There's distrust and fear. And, and, and that's what we did. We let our guard down. We started working with the city. We were very fortunate. I'm, I'm not trying to pump Paul or Jag or anybody's tires here, but fortunate to have the council mission that we do today to work with. So the significance of these lands is in mission. Uh, the first Indian residential school was established in 1860s and then another replaced in the 1900s, approximately three quarters of a kilometer east of the original school. Uh, these lands uh, we're discussing lie immediately between the two old Indian residential schools, um, the the one from the 1860s, obviously, and the the one that's now known as Pequalis uh, in Hatsik. Survivors used these lands um, that were reacquiring to to escape, like find solstice to hide, basically, from the treachery that they were facing in the residential schools up on the hillside, all the way up to where the monastery properties are, basically. And um, uh, it's been it's very important to us to to protect those lands. So uh, the stewardship of that land basically has fallen within with mission because what we've done is we've decided to lease that land for 99 years to the city. So the city can still go ahead and, and have their park. But in the meantime, we've also protected the lands that we wanted to see protected. Yeah, so here's a little uh, aerial of the lands that we're speaking of. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of in the heart of uh, Mission's uh, core area. Mission's downtown is directly to the west of that. And uh, to the north is a tremendous amount of growth that's occurring in the city. And then Hatsik Ridge on the on the uh, east side there. Um, but you can see there's tremendous, it's tremendous potential. And it's a, it's a gem of our community. Um, we hold a lot of uh, events at Heritage Park, which is on the very west side of that um that in the graphic i guess um and it really is a prime piece of real estate that has no doubt potential for for um redevelopment or or some sort of development in the in the area so to share a quick story on the relationship and how the new layout was created um we uh the survey plan when we began to not take into account the highest and best uses of the geographical area, as you can see on the map, the city came together with LMS to provide support on the best options for the highest and best uses of the development. 
And in 2016, I was aware that uh, the city was working on their OCP. The, the, they shared that information with me and invited me to come in to discuss this property. I met with Glenn Robertson and Gina okay. McKay, and uh, we discussed what the highest and best uses would be for the area. And, you know, obviously for us, some economic development is is important, right? So we wanted to work with the city to make sure that it fit their plan. And the city obviously wanted to see us succeed as well. So over time and, and developing the relationship, the subdivision plan was uh, was improved as you see now and uh, in working together. Um, you know, we managed to get in the room, improve our economic opportunity, plus the city's needs for park space and, and tax revenue. Um, er just so you know, like LMS at no point had interest in turning these lands into reserve. It's probably a fear that most of you would have it, um, having a deal like this take place in your your uh, areas. But the fact is for us is like we do take into account the feasibility of lands when we're subdividing. Right. We do look at like the loss of value when it's reserve status because there's no ability for ownership. So we do try to maintain some form of fee simple status uh, in a lot of these cases. So we'll get into some of the opportunities here that um, that benefit both the, the nation's LMS society in particular, the city and the province. And from an L LMS society. Yeah, so oh, where are we? There you go. Let's get the land. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Um, the opportunity from the First Nations perspective, obviously, is the land back. Like, that's first and foremost for us. It's it's the fabric of our culture and, and who we are, right? Um, explaining the meaningfulness of the land and, like, I, I already articulated, the the importance of this land is is monumental to not just our survivors from residential schools. And keep in mind, there, there are people that attended Pequelis that are only a couple of years older than me. Right. So this this is something that'll continue for a few generations yet. And when you factor in generational trauma and knowing the story of your grandmother, your great grandmother, or grandfather or whatever, being able to visit a place where they found solace, you know, take your shoes off and you can probably feel it yourself. Right. Um, as far as development goes, uh, the development potential of the sites, uh, it means it means economic opportunity for us and for our communities. Most of our communities are still segregated, not so much in this Chil Chilliwack area, but when you get over on the other side of the river or even further west, like we're still kind of stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Um, if anybody's been to La Camel or, or the area that Corey's from there, um, you'll know like it, it's farmland, right? Like there's really not much we can do with the small pockets of property we have. And keep in mind, on, on reserve, uh, under the Indian Act, we're still not allowed to even own livestock, right? I'm sure everybody turned a blind eye to it, but the reality is we can't. So developing dairy farms and stuff back in the early 1900s wasn't a reality for us. Cultural and historical uh, significance of the land, again, I, I've, I, I keep returning to the importance of the solace and, and that, but there's also like gathering sites in the area and what have you that that members do access and and it still has meaning to us. Uh, so from the city of Mission perspective, the the opportunity here is far, far more than just economics. Um, we we receive a lot of certainty about the development of these lands. And to Daryl's credit and the LMS Society's credit, uh, finding that loophole and 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 taking these lands back as uh, fee simple lands was it laid a lot of fears for our pol political um parties or political politicians um and i can't understate that enough because as we move forward we can look at we they're going to develop the lands we still get a tax revenue we still get utility revenue um there was zero loss in 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 revenue from a city perspective in this in this transaction but more importantly it's a learning opportunity we get to understand the truths of the land we get to understand the truths um, that surrounds mission and what happened in mission in the past. We can we can face them face up to the realities and the truths that have occurred, um, and we can learn from them and move forward. And a legacy. Um, so one of the things that mission has looked forward to is moving forward in a positive light with a relationship with our First Nations communities. Um, it 
it forms a new way that the city thinks about um, dealing with the our neighbors and our relationships relationships sorry and it, it gets right down to even the, the the development of the city's new logo and we see that in the corner of the slide and we use the western red cedar on purpose because of the cultural significance uh, of the rest western red cedar to our first nations communities it also represents moving um, forward that new relationship with our first nation communities but also celebrates a bit of our history with our cedar mills etc and in, uh, in, in mission So to the relationship building side of things, um, I, I've already touched on it a bit, but uh, the LMS Society in the city, we meet regularly and we have for the last several years. Um, we've we discuss different uh, development and economic opportunities, whether it's crown land or to improve fish habitat, potential fee simple sites that offer value from development perspectives. And the city views this partnership as a way to move common common goals forward, as do us as, as the First Nations communities. Um, as far as the park space goes, uh, we're, we've arranged to set up a park management committee. So although the city will manage, maintain, and, and operate the park under their 99-year lease, we'll, we'll be a part of the park management committee. So like long-term planning and, and the uses of the park and stuff will be included throughout the whole process to ensure that, uh, you know, cultural sensitivities maintained throughout the park and uses as well. Like uh, they started hosting a powwow. I think the third annual powwow will be held up there this year. And uh, we're hoping to expand and grow that. And I haven't told the city yet, but I met with the group last week and they're interested in actually uh, sitting down with, with us. Right. So um, as LMS and the city of mission. So, this is a big step forward, I think, and it and, uh, just goes to show that the relationship's continuing to flourish. So the agreement, um, I'm gonna, I'll just share this. It's, it's really important to us at LMS, but the agreements are known as reconciliation agreements. We changed the name of our agreement to the e health Kaka, which means together we paddle. Um, everybody's heard the proverb, I'm sure, that, uh, you know, if you all paddle in the same direction, you can beat any current. If you're all paddling in different directions, you're just going to spin in circles, right? So uh, the fact is, is reconciliation would insinuate there was a relationship and we're reconciling some differences that we have, but there never truly was a relationship. So the whole point of this is that we're establishing and building a relationship that never existed. Um, the, the point that, that Stan, Stan Morgan from Math, Math Quee was the one that made that point. It was very valuable to us. So it's important that I share that with you. Uh, the name was actually developed by one of our linguists from La Camel, Camille Laszlo. And, uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's you're probably not going to be able to pronounce it right away, but it's Ehalskaka. And as mentioned, it's together we paddle. Um, so it's the next slide, Barkley. Thanks. So a couple of quotes that I'll, I'll offer you, and, and these I hit home, I guess, at the UBCM. Uh, being an ally means taking an active role to do whatever is within your power to ensure all individuals are treated equitably. So why that resonates with us is First Nations communities, as most of you all know, that have worked with your local communities, we lack resources. Um, I'm fortunate at La Camel, we have probably close to 60 staff now. We're expanding rapidly. And uh, it's it's great, but it's also very hard to keep up when you grow this fast. But uh, in recent years, even up until last year, um, for us to plan or, or coordinate certain things, even even this night, for example, like I reached out to Barclay to print off all this, the, the hard copies and stuff, because I don't have the resources just to pick up a phone and ask an assistant to help me out, right? So, you know, the, yeah. <laughs> Barclay's my assistant. So, we, we've heard Barclay's assistant yeah. skills are quite good, though. Yeah. So, it's good. Yeah. so, yeah, so the, the sharing of resources and stuff has definitely gone a long way, and um, it's it's gone to show in our relationship. Um, so yeah, Mission helped us choose the the best support for the legwork for preparing the sites to develop uh, our our future sites and do the subdivision. We we ended up going with a consultant by uh, known as OTG Consulting. They're here in Chilliwack. They're known to the city 
it made sense. It definitely helped expedite a few things and being able to trust your partner to give you a good uh, reference goes a long way in our business. Um, the, the other things that we've looked at is I'm sure everybody's heard about the mis mission's goal with the waterfront development. Well, LMS did make an attempt to purchase the waterfront properties from the landowner. Um, unfortunately, it didn't pan out, but uh, the goal was is we would purchase those lands and with our relationship with the city, develop those lands to something that made sense for both the city and the LMS group. So the common goal, BC saw uh, a city and First Nations working together. And like I said, I've been in the game for a long time, 22 years. It's it's a long time. And uh, I've worked with the province. Well, I'll say that I've tried to work with the province. Um, but I can tell you that this relationship and when the province saw what was happening here, all of a sudden they were at the table. They were a phone call away and they were totally available. Um, we started this before the truth the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was established and they began their work. We, we actually had forged the path using what came of the TRC, not knowing what was coming from the TRC, if you will. And uh, the big thing is, is patience. Like patience is key. So like I said, we have very little resources in most cases. There's a lot of learning curves along the way. And the same goes for the cities and, and regional district uh, areas because you know, there's a lot of learning to do between each of our cultures and, and understanding each other and where we're coming from. And that patience goes a long way. Also, what I found was the province and their negotiators had to sh also be patient with us because like often they want to all of a sudden they get a mandate and they want things to go right now. And the reality is, is lacking resources. It's not reality. Um, so the, the relationship has continued to grow the sharing of resources continues to flourish the relationship and, and uh, you know, our respect for one another continues to grow. You'll see it around the table there, uh, the signing ceremony, we blanketed uh, um, uh, Mayor Horn and, and Minister Rankin and Minister Alexis. Um, this is like one of the highest honors that we offer to people in our culture. And uh, the, the amount of work and, and everything that's went into this, it's, it's really, it's really created a friendship more than just a partnership. And we wanted to honor that. So that's the significance of blanketing uh, everybody that was present that day. Yeah. So I just want to talk about some of the key takeaways and these, these apply to both parties really. Um, but uh, Daryl mentioned patience. This has been a 12 year journey that we've been on together, um, trying to get to the point where our, we are at today. Um, it's mostly about building relationships too. Like, building that trust amongst each other and breaking down those barriers. Like, you know, what's your real intent here? And, and once we were able to get to those commonalities, um, then we could actually start trusting each other and start moving forward in a positive way. Um, and political will. Um, none of this would have happened without the political will of our council and the councils of the LMS uh, nations. So Locamo, Mapfui and uh, Samad. Um, because without that political will, um, really you're just butting heads um, so that was a, one of the biggest takeaways that we uh, we we took away from this this experience, I guess. Um, but you really need all four, and that's the key point here: is that you need to have all those come together. And this is a really unique situation, I think, throughout Canada, probably for this to happen at this time. So this is my quote. This is actually the one that hit home at uh, UMBC. So empathy and gratitude are a measure of a relationship's value. Um, the reason why I say this is because uh, in May 2021, when they they uncovered the remains of this these children in Tecumloops, the first phone call I got, I was driving home from work that day, was from Mike Uni, the CAO at the City of Mission, and uh, he the first thing he asked me was if I was okay, right? Uh, it hit home, obviously, right, because. So I've seen so many people in the two decades that I've been doing this break down in tears. And it's not just the pain of what happened in the past, the pain of not being believed, the pain that people believe that they were lying or not telling the truth of the, the, the tr transgressions they faced. So the first question Mike asked me was that, 
And at that moment, I was like, this is a friend. This is a friend calling. This isn't a colleague or, or a peer or anything like that. This is somebody that genuinely cared. So th the next thing Mike says, is, is there anything we can do to help? Anything at all? And then he went on to recognize like St. Mary's is in the heart of mission. It's right adjacent to the property that we're dealing with. What can they do to assist us to start uh, our own search of the site? I didn't really, I, I was kind of caught off guard. That's never happened to me. And um, so I said, you know what, let me kind of gather my thoughts. I was emotional. Let me gather my thoughts. I'll call you back. I called Mike back the next day and I asked for two logs from the tree farm. Uh, so we could have two uh, two poles carved, one for the Kokolitsa here and one for St. Mary's. Before I even finish asking the question, he's like, "I'll call Chris right now. Chris will be in touch. We'll get you the logs." It was it was that easy. It was it was not a big deal, right? Um, it was a huge deal to us. It ended up that we only ended up needing one because the Chilcoic tribe donated one for Kokolitsa, which was totally fine, but. The pole that's sitting at Pequelis is from the city of Mission and is recognized as a gift from the city to us. So, um, you know, like I said, I mean, it's all right there in that quote, right? Like, if you want to measure your relationship, measure it with empathy, right? Like, understand where our people are coming from, what what my ancestors have dealt with, and like... You know, we're, we're evolving too, right? And uh, I can't stress that enough. Like 22 years, I, <laughs> what I've seen in, I, I when I first started, we had 173 members and today we have 700, okay? And, and when I left high school, there would be one or two of us of 20 that would graduate in, in our age group where today one or two don't graduate, right? We have doctors, we have lawyers, we like, Everybody is becoming professionals, and frankly, I cannot wait until they take my job from me, right? I'm just counting the days, right? But uh, I just, I can't stress that enough, right? Um, don't let fear get in the way of building a relationship because you will find that it will become meaningful quickly. We're becoming way more progressive than we were by letting our guard down, and I think it's time that everybody does the same. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Kamey, and thank you, uh, Mr. McKethley, for your presentation. Yeah, it is worth talking about. It is. I don't think, you know, I don't think we, um, I don't think we have enough opportunity to celebrate these kind of, uh, these, these kind of uh, important milestones in terms of relationships that are building. And so for us to be able to be here tonight and celebrate one of one of our member municipalities and and also um, three really important uh, communities that uh, that you know we we uh, do a lot of work with uh, on and off. But you know I think it's the tip of the iceberg. And I know from the Fraser Valley Regional District perspective, we're looking for opportunities. Uh, I think you used the word ally, and and we're looking for those kind of opportunities to make meaningful changes across our organization as well. So really appreciate your time. Um, there's a couple questions, uh, Director Shaw. Thank you, Chair Lum. Thank you for your presentation, Darren. And it's so nice to see you, Barkley. <laughs> Got a few gray hairs <laughs> more than you did before. <laughs> um, what I'm getting out of this presentation is um, just mutual respect. And that's so important. Uh, you spoke about the value of relationships, but it's not just about sitting together and talking together, but you've actually put it into action, which means you, you're you um, walking the talk. And what a great example for all of us. And I just applaud you. Thank you very much. Director Castle. Thank you, Chair Lam. Uh, I'm a little bit emotional. I'm uh, I'm filled with joy in this moment to not only have an exemplary citizen of Area G in, in this chamber, uh, but also someone that I'm very fortunate to call a friend and a brother. <clears throat> uh, I feel fortunate to call the traditional territory of a very forward-thinking First Nation in this province my home. I'm impressed at this example of what land back can and I believe should look like. 
and I feel privileged to paddle together as we work toward the goal of ensuring all people are treated equally. Thank you, Councillor McCamey, and thank you, Mark Lee, for being here today. So, any other comments before I just return back to uh, Director Horn for the last uh, comment? I don't see any. Director Horn, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for telling the story. Um, and what I love is how much the story resonates when we tell it, even though it became over a course of about 12 years, just our normal business. We didn't really realize, and Daryl, you've really done a great job of talking about how it was really kind of ahead of its time and in uh, literal, in literally in its timing and its creativity. And uh, Daryl, your leadership was a huge part of the reason for that. Um, you know, going back to the 1860s, the name of our community, the very name of our community was based around this paternalistic idea that we knew what was better for Indigenous people. And over the course of the last few years, there's been some debate. Do we stick with the name? Do we change the name? And I think what we've kind of come to the conclusion of is we change the meaning of the name. And this is the first step in a new mission to demonstrate to the to the to rest of this country and the rest of the world what what conciliation what partnership means and i want to just say to this group one of the takeaways for me is when i look at other communities who are working for ways of, of reconciling there's a lot of focus on things that i would say are symbolic and there's nothing wrong with the symbolic as well but they don't really move the needle on the quality of life for people of a first nations background and what we have focused on is partnership, genuinely on partnership. And I just want to say there's never been a moment that I have thought to myself, this was something that scared me. Every single time we've thought about it, it has been with eagerness, excitement, and it's been productive. And so you've talked, Daryl, about the role that LMS at one time was trying to have in the waterfront. I mean, I know that opportunity didn't work out, but we all know another one is going to. And you've been partners in that project. As you well know, the Camel has played a very significant role in the Hatsik Watershed Stewardship Team as well. And I think the way that we work together, I know I can call you at any moment and say, how do we navigate through Canada Day at Heritage Park? And we sought to find a solution. And the, how do we deal with the archaeological analysis and the sensitivity that needs to happen in a working park? Those dialogues are helping as well. And seeing as how you popped on me today that you're going to talk about powwow with us. I'm going to be calling you about transferring crown lands to help more uh, housing with, with working in partnership LMS with crown lands as well. So we have a conversation to have, but it's very, very gratifying to know that we can do that. And, uh, and that really is thanks to the leadership that you and Luke Campbell Mathwee and Samath leadership have brought to the table. So thank you for not only telling the story, but for being one of the reasons the story can be told. Great. Well, unless there are any uh, final words, uh, I just thank you for the uh, the opportunity to share your story uh, tonight. And uh, we, uh, we certainly um, don't hear enough of them. So want to be a part of creating future, uh, future positive stories that we can talk about like this way. It was the same amount of, uh, uh, excitement and pride and, and vision that uh, you guys have exercised. So thank you very much. Thank you. And if anybody here ever needs to an ear to lean on or anything, like I, I'm totally open to that. Uh, reach out anytime. I'm very close to all the nations around here. Like with all the years experience, I, I get leaned on by a lot of them for advice as well, too. So I'm happy to assist if I can help with those relationships. And I will just add one thing that I think is, is important is Mission was recognized uh, on behalf of LMS for by the BC Economic Development Association and the Canadian National Economic Development Association. We were awarded Partnership of the Year for 40,000 plus population. Um, you know, and so that just, it just goes to show like this, this isn't something that's just a regional excitement. This has become like a national thing, right? So the offers out there, if anybody has, uh, needs any advice or assistance, just let us know. Thank you very much. And this is just the beginning. You're going to have to watch mission for more. <laughs>
And we tease you because we love you, Barkley. That's why we give you such a hard time. Yeah. Next item is Kinnaman. 5.1 is the draft Fraser Valley Regional District Board meeting minutes of September 28th, 2023. Thank you. It's moved by Director Mercer, seconded by Director Pranger. All in favor, post if any item carries next item. And 5.2 is the draft committee of the whole open meeting minutes of September 26th, 2023. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Chairman. Moved by Director Fascio, seconded by Director Clute. Uh, questions? None all in favor. Pose if any item carries next item. Items 6.1 through 6.6 .6 are committee minutes for information and matters arising. Questions on any of the information items? Don't see any. All in favor? Oh, sorry, that's an information item. Next item. 7.1 is the FBRD Accessibility Advisory Committee Terms of Reference. There is a motion for your consideration. Thank you. It's moved by Director Horn, seconded by Director Ross. Uh, questions? Discussion? Uh, I think this is a really um, uh, good uh, opportunity or a good option that staff presented here for this uh, committee. I know many of us in our um, respective municipalities have been working hard on these uh, committees to satisfy the provincial legislation. And so I'll just thank staff for coming up with a, a good solution here. Thank you. Call the question. All in favor? Opposed if any of the item carries. Next item. 8.1 is financial plan 2023 to 2027 amendment for October. There are two motions for your consideration. Thank you. Motion number one is moved by Director Rod, uh, Siemens, seconded by Director Castle. Discussion? None. All in favor? Opposed, Benny. The item carries. Motion number two is moved by Director Shahal, seconded by Director Dickey. All in favor? Opposed? Oh, did you have a question? Okay. Yes, yeah. go ahead, Director uh, Dickey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, um, is this a is this a one time cost? The, the uh, I'm looking at the remaining sixty seven thousand to be included in the uh, budget. If I'm at the right one, just have to give me a minute. So, I can... is there a page number that you're referring to, Director Dixon? Maybe I'm on the uh, wrong item. <laughs> We're on the amendment. This is the Panga design and build design build on Elmer Carson, I think. Okay, yeah. I'm ahead of it. You're one up. I'm yeah. one ahead of you. Okay. No, okay. Wait. Okay. okay. We okay on that one? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so I'll call the question. Motion number two. All in favor? Opposed if any. The item carries. Next item. Uh, 8.2 is the 2023 grant and aid application for the Lake Eric Community Association. There is a motion for your consideration. Uh, thank you. A mover and a seconder on this one. It's moved by Director Sadu, second by Director Johnson. Discussion? Uh, hearing none. All in favor? Opposed to Penny. Item carries. Next item. 8.3 is the regional grant and aid applications for the 2024 budget year. Uh, thank you. It's moved by Director Dickey, second by Director Popo. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Director Davidson, go ahead. Um, thank you, Chair. As I was looking at the, the applications, something um, stuck in my mind for the Caracata one, where they referred to uh, providing camping as an option. And I was minded that I don't believe camping is an allowable or might not be an allowable land use um, for that particular property. So this is kind of a procedural question back to staff. Uh, in preparing these recommendations, had the uh, committee validated that purported um, activity that the, the grant aid was going towards would be consistent with land use regulations for the relevant property or is that outside of the uh, regional grant and aid criteria and potentially a gap that needs to be addressed uh miss kenneman sure i'll take a stab at it and then maybe turn back to staff um i don't believe through the uh, regional grant and aid review process that there would have been consideration to uh, run that through our planning team but i'll just look over to uh, Ms. Lonsbro and uh, Hasib Nadvi from planning to see if uh, just off the top of their head, if they know uh, whether that's an allowable land use for that property. 
Salisbury. Okay. Thank you for the question. Our procedure is to go through our regional grant and aid policy, uh, which has a number of set criteria. However, um, confirming land use uh, is not one of those. Um, I'm not sure if that actually came up in the, the no, it, it did not come up in the uh, regional grant and aid uh, deliberations of the committee. So I guess my question then, I, I guess um, what would be helpful, I guess, to provide clarity is, is the grant directly involved in that specific use or supporting that specific use? I, I, it didn't look like that to me. Um, I thought it was separate from that, but if if the if the grant and aid was being um, delivered to this particular organization, um, specific to that the the use that uh, Director Davidson brought up, like we're not supporting camping, are we? We're supporting. Uh, they have a bunch of other delivery services that they talked about. Thank you for the question. Um, the The primary pur purpose is to purchase program supplies and materials for a program. So I don't believe that the primary purpose of the grant and aid was for camping. So maybe I wonder if it's possible to um, add a, a caveat or an amendment or something to the delivery of that grant that it that it be consistent with um, the underlying land use or zoning of the of the land. Is that possible? Uh, Chair Lam, I think that that's absolutely possible when we communicate back to the uh, recipients. Do you need a Do you need a board uh, direction in that? No, manner? we do not. No. Okay. Does that work, uh, Director Davidson? For you? Um, I, I think that'll work very well. Just obviously wanted to avoid a situation where we're providing grant money to something which ultimately um, contravenes a bylaw, and. Uh, However, we get to uh, that level of assurance, I'm, I'm sure staff will look after it. That works for me just fine. Thank you. Great. Director Horn, you had a, a comment? Yeah, just quickly reviewing the application um, while conversation was going on. Um, it's clear that the organization does say that uh, there will be an option to camp, hike, and fish uh, in the area of the larger community. It doesn't, in either place that it mentions camping, oh. identify that it would be on the property. Yeah. Still a worthwhile thing. I think to spell out and neither is there any request um, for camping supplies um, in the in the request so I just a quick scan of it showed me that. Director Dixon thank you Director Horn. Thank you Mr. Chair mm -hmm. oh, and I was on the right spot the last time but anyway uh, just a, I guess I'm looking for a little clarification because it seems like two of these are um, uh, for uh, weekend, making sure that uh, families have weekend food, but it seems to me that they're for the same areas. Like, is there, um, do they communicate with each other? Like, um, I'm talking about Mission, Sunrise, Rotary, and it looks like Isthmus, I think, is the other one. And um, uh, as well as in the St. Joseph's, I think, is, is uh, delivering the food. So, I'm just a little bit curious about that. Ms. Kinnaman, did they meet the regional grant and aid um, qualifications that we've yeah, put Through forth? the chair to Director Dixon, um, it's an open process for any organization that meets the, the uh, requirements. Uh, the committee reviewed each one uh, based on its merits and meeting the qualifications, but there's nothing within the policy that would prohibit or preclude uh, organizations within the same geographical area from applying. Director uh, Chair, let yeah, me answer that question from personal experience as well. That, uh, in fact, I would say there are three organizations here that are coordinated: St. Joseph's and the two that you brought up, Director Dixon. But they're all working in a coordinated way. Thank you. Other uh, questions? Uh, hearing, seeing none. I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? If any, the item carries. Next item. 9.1 is the Fraser Valley Regional District Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 1691 to correct mapping, improve definitions, improve regulations, and address minor housekeeping matters. Thank you. This is for uh, EAs. It's moved by Director Dickey and seconded by Director Dixon. Uh, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed, if any? Item carries. Next item. 9.2 is the Fraser Valley Regional District Area A Garbage Disposal Fees and Charges Amendment Bylaw Number 1721. Thank you. Uh, it's moved by Director Johnson, seconded by Director Adamo. Um, discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed, if any, item carries. Motion number two is moved by Director Dickey, seconded by Director Mercer. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed, if any, item carries. And motion number three is moved by Director Johnson, seconded by Director Clute. Uh, questions? All in favor? Opposed, if any, item carries. Next item. 9.3 is the Fraser Valley Regional District North Cultus Sewer System Loan Authorization Bylaw Number 1720. Thank you. It's moved by Director Dixon, second by Director Clute. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor. Opposed, if any, item carries. Next item. 9.4 is the Fraser Valley Regional District Popcom West Storm Drainage Service Area Amendment Bylaw Number 1701. Thank you. It's moved by Director Dickey, second by Director Popo. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor. Opposed, if any, item carries. Motion number two. Uh, is moved by Director Mercer, seconded by Director Castle. Uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed if any item carries. Next item. 10.1 is Covenants, Geohazard, and Well Treatment for Boundary Adjustment Subdivision between 9633 and 9643 Hess Road in Electoral Area G. Thank you. It's moved by Director Castle, seconded by Director Clute. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed if any item carries. Next item. 11.1 .1 is emergency management legislation and regulatory update. Thank you. It's moved by Director Mercer, second by Director Dickey. Discussion? Hearing none. Oh, oh sorry, Director no. Dickey. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Just a question through the chair to staff. Um, I understand that recently some new legislation has come forward that uh, it appears it may have far-reaching impacts on electoral areas and the complexities around emergency management. Just wondered if staff might like to comment on that. Uh, thank you, Director Dickey. And I think that's part of what we're hoping to gather on some of these regulations. So I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, Ms. Kinnaman, uh, I, I noted we got a letter today from uh, adjacent or another regional district um, identifying some concerns as well. So uh, I I think that's what staff are intending to encompass in some of this, but I'll let you. Sure. Um, yeah, just to kind of uh, give a general overview, uh, the new Emergency and Disaster Management Act uh, was tabled in the legislature on October the 3rd. Um, prior to that, um, the chair and I had both had the opportunity to participate in a UBCM chair and CAO forum when we had been advised that the most important part of the legislation would be when uh, there was opportunities for engagement on the regulation. Uh, we were assured at that time that there would be ample opportunity for local government to participate in that engagement. Uh, while that uh, legislation, while that draft act is still at the committee stage uh, before the legislature, uh, the period of time for engagement uh, ends December 31st of this year, which is about two months worth of time. Uh, the new act uh, was only just, as I said, released on October the 3rd. Um, it's gone from, I think, a 14-page document to a 124-page document. Uh, so in addition to the act itself, as well as these new regulations, which will have uh, significant new responsibilities and financial impacts uh, on the emergency management program. Uh, it's rather important that we uh, have our voice heard uh, as part of that uh, uh, dialogue. Um, there isn't a lot of time. We don't want to uh, delay and, and just request an extension. I think we can certainly request that and identify that it's an inadequate amount of time to fully analyze the legislation and provide that feedback. But I think it's also important and uh, that we at least give some in initial feedback uh, before that December 31st deadline. So that's what staff will be doing between now and then. Uh, we will provide that feedback as we've been doing along the way. Uh, you had staff representation on the UBCM Flood and Fire Wildfire Advisory Committee uh, for some time. Uh, that committee disbanded, I believe, in January of this year. Uh, and since that time, we've had no real opportunity or um, at least um, realistic opportunity to participate in uh, what this legislation was going to look like. The bottom line is, is that the expectations on local authorities is going to increase, and that is true for electoral areas and also for each of our member municipalities uh, who have a role in providing emergency management. Director Dickey. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chair, and so 
the time frame that is being awarded to us is is that um, is it even possible to come up with an assessment in that time frame? Uh, through the chair to Director Dickey, I'm very confident that you have some staff uh, on the regional district team that are probably among the most informed in the province of British Columbia on emergency management and the impacts of this new legislation. So we will certainly uh, provide a very fulsome, as fulsome as we can. Um, it, it would be much better if we had more time, um, but I'm, I'm confident that we'll be able to meet that deadline. We are going to ask for more time, and I know that other jurisdictions are doing it, that as well. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director. Any other comments, questions? Don't see any. I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed, if any. The item carries. Next item. 11.2 is the Building Bylaw and BC Building Code Contraventions at 14750 Sylvester Road in Electoral Area F. Thank you. Mover and a seconder on that one. Move Davidson. Moved by Director Davidson, seconded by Director Siemens. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed, if any? Item carries. Next item. And 11.3 is Building Bylaw and BC Building Code Contraventions at 36225 Bayer Road in Electoral Area F. Thank you. It's moved Move by Davidson again. Mr. Davidson, seconded by Director Dixon. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed, oh, if any? What? Oh, sorry, oh, Charlo. Sorry, uh, Director Barkman, go ahead. So where there's blatant uh, contravention, how, looking at some of these dates, how does the regional district deal with that? Ms. Kinnaman. Um, Shalom, I think I'm going to turn to uh, our manager of planning, Hasib Nadvi, to answer that question. Sir Nadvi. Through the chair, um, in this case, uh, notice and title is just one of the steps to inform uh, future property owners. And uh, we have, uh, ask the property owner to apply for a building permit. And with, if within the stated timeline, they don't uh, make progress on the building permit, there are provisions in our bylaw, enforced, uh, in our bylaw to fine for zoning uh, contraventions. So that's how we proceed. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, seeing none, call the question. All in favor? Opposed, if any, item carries. Next item. 11.4 is the Cascade Lower Canyon Community Forest Overview and Revenue Sharing Policy. Thank you. That's moved by Director Smith, seconded by Director Pryor. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed, if any? The item carries. Next item. 11.5 is Solid Waste Management Plan Facility Authorization for Abbey Bin Services. Thank you. It's moved by Director Horn, seconded by Director. Clute, discussion. Hearing none, all in favor. Opposed, if any, item carries. Next item. Uh, next item is an information item. It's the FBRD quarterly update. Questions on the uh, information item? Don't see any. Next item. Uh, moving down to item 13, we have items 13.1 through 13.7 for information and correspondence. Thank you. Questions on any of our correspondence items? Don't see any. Next item. Uh, moving to reports by board directors. Thank you, directors. Be our opportunity. Director Horn, go ahead. Thank you. Um, received a letter yesterday from um, uh, the assistant commissioner of the RCMP uh, in this region. Um, following a meeting we had at UBCM with him uh, on a number of issues, including one that's been of interest to this table and one that was recently discussed at committee. Um, and that committee, we, we debated as to whether or not uh, we were wise to take action at this point or be to take a more, shall I say, patient approach, given the information that the uh, transition away from BC Highway Patrol responding to accidents and erratic drivers uh, was delayed September 1st. And some of us received a letter saying that the, there would be some, there were a minor amount of consultation or words to that effect. Uh, I wanted to read a sentence from the letter uh, that I think, uh, I think will inform the board uh, in terms of whether or not um, more consultation uh, demands a more active approach. Uh, when we met with Mr. with uh, Assistant Commissioner McDonald, we advocated very strongly that he 
engage with at least the communities that were on Highway 1 here, uh, Chilliwack, Hope, and Abbotsford, as well as some in the metro area. Um, and um, this is the response we received, uh, the key sentence. However, a delay in the anticipated date has occurred, meaning the September 1st date was extended, as there remain a few outstanding points that need to be addressed in order to implement the new model. I recognize that this is a matter important to the municipality, and I commit to sharing the new implementation date once it is determined. Uh, I do not hear any word of consultation in that sentence, and I think it should inform next steps by our board. Um, and the, the board had, uh, or the committee had talked uh, about whether or not to take an active approach to asking that that uh, uh, consultation process begin and that it involve at least the mayors of the, of, of the Fraser Valley Regional District with numbered highways. Um, I'll leave that out there for committee members to debate, but I, I think this letter tells me that um, as it has been is as it shall be, unless we do something differently. Thank you, uh, Director Horan. I've got uh, Director Dickey, and then I'll uh, go to Director Popo. Separate issue, thank you. Okay, was this on this one, Director Popo? Do you wanna yeah. chime in? Yep, go for it. I refer to Director Mercer for his advice on moving forward. The committee decided not to reply, um, but um, with your, knowledge and history um what is your take on that yeah i'm at a bit of a disadvantage because i haven't seen the letter why don't we and i don't want to jump to conclusions here i also don't want to uh maybe we're in the open portion of this uh this meeting and director reports and if there's going to be some future direction decided maybe we can uh have an offline with uh director horn and director mercer and get you the information that's being shared and then determine maybe where the next steps might might lie that might then you're not at a disadvantage put on the spot here right now but in open if i may um i i think there is a solution but i i'm just not sure where the right opportunity i'd rather do it um, enclosed if that's possible yeah i think um we should have a, a a discussion where we have all the all the information at the table and and see how best to to approach. I think times yeah. of the essence, probably. Yep, yeah, agree. Uh, Director Dickey. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, board directors might uh, remember last spring, uh, the district manager from the Ministry of Forest came before the board, and we talked about uh, improved road access into the Mount Shiam recreational area. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, some road building machinery has been up there and made some really big improvements to that road access. And uh, already the local and uh, Prince Valley wide recreational users are very excited and thrilled about that improvement. And uh, Mount Sham's a world-class outdoor recreational asset that's great to see. And uh, I would especially like to thank uh, Ms. Kinneman for all the work she did in uh, making sure this happened. Thank you, uh, Director Dickey, and uh, I think, you know, a lot of you don't sell yourself short, a lot of advocacy on your part, and uh, having the ministry come to, to our board and present some of their some of their information, I think it was helpful. Uh, they saw how uh, passionate this board was about uh, about uh, the outdoors and about uh, Shiam in particular, so that's uh, exciting news. Other uh, reports? Director Siemens, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, just uh, sticking with the theme of today's delegation um, of reconciliation and, and partnerships and collaboration, I did have the honor of representing the city at a transboundary signing um, that includes the state of Washington, um, the province of BC, Whatcom County, uh, five First Nations, um, three, which was Semeth, Mathclay, and Camel, and the, from the Canadian side, and then um, the Nooksack Tribal Council and Lummi Nation. Uh, just very meaningful, and it was really quite significant when you looked at the, the age, gender, um, and ethnicity of the diversity at that table of, of the nine of us. Um, it was quite... Um, yeah, it, it was just a, a really meaningful moment. I think it struck us all when we looked at the um, at the diversity of how 
we made principled decisions for principled reasons. And all of a sudden you take a look around that table and it kind of blew us away. So we really have made a lot of progress um, on both sides of the border with, with representation. Um, so that was very significant. Um, the transboundary is a, a collaboration similar to the what we signed with on the Canadian side um, with um, Mission or with uh, Chilliwack and Abbotsford and uh, the First Nations and the province. Um, and this commits us to working together so that we align and uh, we I have a lot of work to do, but it, I think it's the first time that we've had that level of um, of cooperation on both sides of the border. So it was very significant. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Stevens. Other uh, reports from board directors? Okay, I don't see any. Ms. Kenneman, next item. Moving to public question period for items relevant to the agenda. Uh, we have no members of the public here with us in the boardroom, but we'll just turn things over to our corporate officer, Jamie Van Ness. Ms. Van Ness, anyone online? We don't have anybody joining us online, and we've received no written questions. Okay, next item. Looking for a resolution to close the meeting. No move, Mr. Chairman. Moved by Director Fascio, second by Director Pranger. All in favor, opposed, Benny, and carries. And take a couple minutes. A couple minutes. <laughs> 